saying something will not help. Instead, being or being a witness to it is the way. We say many things we do not understand, we do not mean, and in that process, we forget the other aspects, being or being a witness to any particular circumstance, situation or whatsoever we utter. I have heard a man was working on his thesis. It was a very important piece of paper, the map, a big map, bigger than on it, uh, that can rest on a table. He was working on that and it was the crux of the matter on which his entire research, his work, his progress, everything was dependent. He was working on that day and night and it so happened his wife called him. First he refused, then he answered, he said, what is the matter? He said, someone is there to talk to you, come and, have a, come and talk to the person. So reluctantly he went and he talked to the person. It took nearly 20-25 minutes to finish that talk. After finishing the talk, he came back to the room. To his utter dismay, he found his little three-year-old child was playing with that map. He tore it into pieces and he was still playing with it. And as soon as the child saw the father, he gave a giggle, a laughter. So father could not get angry, although he wanted to get angry, but there is no way because child is innocent and he did not do it anything purposefully. He was simply playing. This is the situation with the children. So his wife came and she said, what is the matter? He said, look, I told you that do not disturb me when I am doing the work and what this child has done. So normally we have the attitude, we have the way of transferring our responsibility on others. He could have come out of the room, secured his room properly and lock it and then come out. Instead he left it open and when something happened he blames the other. As if the wife had sent the child to disturb it. So wife said, what is so important? He said, don't you know that my entire progress, research is dependent on this map. This is the basis that I have to work on this. So she said, what is, she inquired, what was behind the map? The man said, how does it matter what was behind the map? The map was important and whatsoever was behind that is not important. So she said, when you was holding the map in your hand, I saw an image of the man behind it. The man said, so what? If the image was that of a man or animal or anything, how does it matter? So probably he thought that maybe she is trying to convince him that look for the image of the man, whosoever image was, maybe he is the one who made the map. He may have another copy. He said there is no other copy of that map. This is the only one. She said we cannot do anything about the map. We do not know how to put the pieces of the map together. But certainly we have familiarity with the face of the man. We can put the pieces together by working on the rivers process and when the image of the man is complete, we will the other side will also complete. This is a process. So this appeal to the man, he said that sounds reasonable, that sounds logical, let's see if we can do that. They started uh, putting the pieces together, used the tape and put all the pieces of the pieces together to complete the face of the man. They noticed it was a lot of time it took 
to put the eyebrows, the left eyebrow, the right eyebrow, because the each has a different contour and one cannot replace the other. The bend, the angles, the angle of the right nostril, left nostril, you can imagine all kinds of problems when we have to put the face of a man together. The moment she put together and they realized that the image of man is complete, the wife said, yes, this is the image and the image is complete now. She told the man, turn it over. When he turned over, it was to his utter surprise, the map was complete. He said, I could never imagine that I, could, uh, I would be able to put this map together. What do we learn from this? This is the situation that we face in the world. The world is divided. Everything is divided into this and that. There are contours, there are lines of divisions and there is conflict over this. The power and all that. And we are trying to correct those through the math side. It cannot be done. The, when the image of the man got shattered, that means everything got shattered. It was important to put the image of the man together. His thoughts, his emotions, his feelings, his waking state. The three stages are there, the waking, dreaming and deep sleep. So out of these stages, what is important, whether you are waking or sleeping or you are dreaming, these are the three stages. Then the mind, mind is divided into many, male, female, right and wrong, good and bad, tall and short, man and women. Then different divisions on the basis of religion, on the basis of caste, creed, nationality, all these creates divisions. So if we have focus our attention on being, being the witness, whatsoever we are doing, whether we are dreaming, whether we are sleeping, whether we are waking, or whether we are eating, whether we are walking down the street, if we can keep hold on to one thing that is the our attention, the witnessing, that remembering that I am a witness to all this. This world is a stage and everything is nothing more than a mere acting. But do not get involved too much with the acting. Let acting remain an acting. Someone is your husband, someone is your wife, someone is a businessman, the next one is a customer. All this part of the acting that is taking place on the stage. But deep within, you are one. It is important for you to go to the shop. This game is beautiful. There is no need to break it. Same way, similarly, the life has been given to you. There is no need. You are going into relation. You know, just as we are the two travelers who meet by chance in a travel, whether there is a, a travel is in the train or the plane, we are sitting next to one another. We are together for the, uh, the duration of the flight. In the beginning, you do not break the ice, but then start talking to one another. There is no need to run away from any situation or circumstance whatsoever it is. And if you can fix the, the image of the man, make it total, make it total, then everything else is put in the place. This process of waking, and in that waking state, there is some actions taking place. You are not the action. 
the work on the shop is one prayer it doesn't matter whether you are going to the shop or you are going to the temple or church or anything this is part of the world and what are you i am simply the one who sees it and you are simply a witness to it then you will be able to know that which is and you will be able to understand that whatsoever you say whatsoever you do is not important instead behind whatsoever is happening on the surface i am speaking speaking is taking place this is part of the work part of the meditation i have to speak but along with that speaking or witnessing is going on constantly my attention is on my center then the words do not remain an ordinary words instead it becomes the measure to transfer the energy field and what william rice says when you breathe air comes into your through your nostrils into you along with the air some particles comes in hindus call this as prana vayu the life force william raish calls these as alan vaithi or orgone that these comes into you and it is that which is important air the oxygen is only a a medium through which this energy particle comes into you so these words are simply the medium through which the energy field is being transferred onto you because the nature of the meditation is such we are not sitting face to face with one another you are simply hearing the voice if you are sitting and i am seeing you you are seeing me that the energy can be transferred now what is the medium through which that energy field of witnessing that the master is he can transfer it on to the the listeners is known as tawajju or the attention or the energy field of the master words are the medium through which the energy field is carried the subtle particles of the energy and it is that which really works words are meaningless maybe to some people these words will be meaningless this story may be very relevant they can remember this story and narrate it but it will not have this similar effect the effect comes from your own innerness in from your own understanding from your own process of witnessing and that which is your process of witnessing is a replica of god within it is immeasurable it is you cannot measure it and you can simply know it but you cannot say anything about it and even if you use the word the depth is infinite or god is in infinite it is meaningless you uh, that means you have finished counting whatsoever the extent of the number is you cannot be said to be infinite and if you say counting is not yet over all statements will be useless saying god is infinite solves nothing whatsoever word you use infinite immeasurable or anything else does not matter all words are futile if it is not emanating from the deepest core nanak says nothing can be said about god nothing can be said about that which is that is why lao lao sin introduced the word tao He said that which is cannot be put into the words. 
the moment you use the word water it is owns it cannot represent that which is all words are futile nothing can be said about god and whatsoever you say you are the criteria so when someone says god is immeasurable he is saying that this is beyond my capacity so to if you use the word infinite it means the same thing each tribe has its own concept and criteria of numbers there are certain tribes who cannot go beyond the number 3 accordingly anything beyond 3 is infinite someone who can count up to 1 million so infinite will be beyond 1 million is really god infinite or all human measure exhaust beyond a certain limit whatever man says actually relates to him alone in front of god man is incapable all your ways and means of the world of duality fail to say anything and based on that criteria all your efforts prove futile the two realms differ and this is one is the realm of being and the other is the realm of doing nothing about god one can really remain mute when something is very beyond description that time silence is the only measure nanak says any word will not matter saying will not matter instead doing or more so be something will really matter when you are and you are a witness that very gesture will say something by being something transformation happens in you you are now reaching fruition and once you have attained you are it will be even wrong to say that you are god instead i would like to say godliness is now manifesting through your being the totality that manifests through the entire creation you are part of that nanak was sent to school he inquired from the teacher can i really know god knowing all that you are teaching you are telling me so many things about god by hearing that or understanding that can i know god the teacher was not expecting such a question for a small child the teacher hesitated he responded knowing god you will know many things but certainly not god nanak said then there is no need of such education if this education cannot help me to know god then there is no need nanak said then there is no need of such education i need to know that technique knowing which everything becomes known and beyond which there remains nothing to be known maybe the teacher was honest enough he brought nanak back home and told his father there is nothing that can be taught to this boy he goes on raising such questions whose answers i do not have he is an incarnation how this happened india speaks of past lives the body of nanak is that of a small child however within that body dwells an infinite consciousness because soul's journey never comes to an end it continues through various stages even death cannot stop that 
the journey of consciousness transcends time and space dimension. Beyond time and space, the soul's journey continues without a break. Only just a remembrance is needed. How that is possible? You are working on a project. Weekend comes. And when weekend comes, you have to stop where you have and then we go in the government offices and we proudly say that we are public servant. So 8 to 4, the moment comes the hour, the hour of 4 is coming to an end before that, long before we start preparing ourselves to leave at 4 o'clock. And then Monday comes, over the weekend you engage in other things and you forget all about the work. Monday morning when you go, it does not take much time for you to refresh where you have left. Just you take maybe 15-20 minutes, maybe half an hour, maybe 45 minutes just to go through and you refresh everything and, the journey, and then you continue on that project. Beyond time and space, journey continues without a break. And the child is speaking of the continuation of the same journey of consciousness. No child is really a child. The journey of consciousness continues in a child. Be respectful to the child. Who knows? He may know more than you. His knowing, his experience may be deeper than his age. Be always respectful towards the child. Quite often, child's question puzzles you and you seem to have no answer. I recall the, I was staying with one of my uncles. He has two children, maybe eight years, nine years. The younger one was very, very mischievous. And everybody used to complain that he is so mischievous, he cannot sit down properly or all the time doing something or the other. So I asked him one day, I said, why do you do so much of mischief? He said, bro, if, I, if the little children don't do mischief, who you expect to do the mischief? If little children don't do the mischief, who else do you expect to do the mischief, to be so mischievous? Now as an adult, as a grown-up person, do you have an answer to this question? I still remember that question. I still remember the answer of that boy. If little children will not do mischief, who else do you expect to do the mischief? Quite often children's questions are intriguing and they puzzle you and you seem to have no answer. One thing was certain about the teacher, he confessed his ignorance in front of Nanak, in front of a child. But we do not. We do not uh, and, and that closes all the doors. The moment you accept your ignorance, Ignorance is the gateway to awareness. The moment you accept your ignorance, the doors open. No scripture can really make you learn it. There is no use teaching any scripture to this child, Nanak. This comes from a different way. The indestructible, the imperishable, the unknown, the unknowable, Akshar means that which is eternal. That was in the beginning, that is now, and that will always be, is the very name of God. Indestructible, the imperishable, the unknown, the unknowable, eternal, beyond time and space. Akshar, shar means that which is destroyed, destructive. Uh, Akshar means that which cannot be destroyed. That was in the beginning, that is now and that will always be 
is the very name of God. This is the way of worship. There is no need to say anything, just filled with this existential sound. That is all. Prayer has begun. And there is no need to say anything that I am a sinner. No confession can ever become a prayer. But we consider confession as a prayer. Out of ego, man has created so many prayers. You go to the emperor, you have to implore again and again. Sing the glories, only then you can gain favors. Such implorations have become prayers. Nanak says these cannot be a prayer. And God is not egoistic that he has to implore. He has to wait that you implore or beg upon you. You are praising God as if you are trying to convince or invoke the sleeping God. God is not like you. We consider him. The more we praise him, the more we talk about his glories, so he may be convinced and it is like you are coaxing him to shower his favors onto you. As far as the worldly men, the politicians, the kings, this will work. With God it will not work. It seems these are your prayers. No praise can ever become a prayer. Are you capable of praising him? That which is immeasurable, about who nothing can be said, but ego thinks so. Then what can really be the prayer? Nanak says, be filled with this existential sound. Beyond this existential sound, there is no prayer. Omkar, the existential sound, that was in the beginning, when everything was not there. It is said when Mirza Ghalib says, when I was not, when nothing was, God was. When I will not be, nothing will be there, God will be. It is the same thing as saying that in the beginning there was the world, world was God. There is nothing beyond that. Therefore drown in this existential sound, in this existential energy. You are prayerful. Life will attain meaning. Man has created many temples, churches and mosques. And within these was created a device of sound structure for the sound to echo. That is dome. This device is to create the echo. When you speak something, echo is created. There are certain places in Taj Mahal when you go, the man who is taking you on a tour and he reaches a certain place, he creates a sound and you continue to hear the echo for a little while. These were devices to create the meditation to create a meditative awareness, to create an echo of the sound within the four walls of the temple or temple echoes. In modern terms, this is known as biofi technology. This device amplifies the echo manifold and it appears to be coming from far. Tibetan bells are symbol of these you hit the gong and it continues. When in the temples you go, there are church bells, there are gongs, there are... Once you hit the gong or the bell, then echo comes and continues there. You are supposed to listen to that. You have to listen to that sound. It is not a mere ritual. You hit that and then you go. No, you have to wait and listen to that. The biofeed technique is an important device and in times to come, these will be very useful. Accordingly, through a small instrument, effort is made to render your mind silent. Try to understand this. 
A screen is placed in front of you. Your mind and the screen is connected to the device. As the thought process continues in the mind, many colors appear on the screen like red spots. And as the mind begins the process of inner silence, the color of that spot, those spots changes to blue. And finally, as the mind becomes silent, there remains no color on the screen. Therefore, sitting in front of the screen, you go on watching the different color spots appearing as the outcome of your inner thought process. This is the outcome of witnessing. Mind is filled with anger and the red spot appears in abundance on the screen. As you get relaxed, the color of the spot changes to blue. You are blissful. This is biofeed. Now even the screen has started cooperating. Thus begins the process of interaction between you and the screen. You will notice how things have begun the process of change within. Thus you will understand the process of transformation. Now you can deliberately reduce the extent of spots from the screen. Such small devices are in frequent use in the West for meditation. East has created its own biofeed instrument. The dome in the temple and the mosque is the biofeed device to create the echo of the existential sound. As your inner sound reaches close to the existential sound, the intensity of the sound within will increase. The sound begins to emanate more and more from the inner being and not the lips. You will not find the quality of the echo returning from the dome has changed. Temple echoes are more, in, more peaceful and blissful as well. Deeper you enter this existential echo within temple echoes, you will become blissful. Then you can experience this sound echoing all around. Where you had experienced noise and disturbance once, a new music, a new echo evolves from there now. And when you attain to fruition, you will find the entire cosmos permeating this existential sound and bliss overflows each moment. This is a small device. Begin from there. You can begin to learn swimming only in shallow waters and then you can swim in deep waters. So to start drowning in the temple echoes. You can start drowning through into your being through the process of witnessing and then one day you will certainly learn the art of drowning in the vastness of all that is existential. If you start the witnessing process in small events, slowly and slowly you will find greater interest and you can overcome all the problems that you encounter. And then wherever and then wherever you will create the sun, you will find the reign of bliss begins to happen. The dome of temple symbolizes the vast infinite sky. Nanak says, the indestructible word is the prayer. This is ultimate knowing. This is ultimate glory. Out of this sound evolves all that is manifest and unmanifest. This is your destiny. This is not only delicate, instead difficult to comprehend as well. As this existential sound opens within, it can open as a witnessing. Life unfolds new meaning. This listening to this existential sound or being a witness 
is the same thing, two ways of saying something. This is the key to bring about this inner change. Moving away from this leads to a life of misery and misfortune. Moving away from this is hell and coming closer to witness. God is not your fate or destiny or just a coincidence. God is beyond all finiteness. Nowhere to go and nothing to be done. All this is without any purpose. And Hindus call this as a play, a game, meaningless, without any purpose. It is like meaningless play of a child. Just playing the game is meaningful. Playing for what? Just for fun. Just as flowers blossom, river flows, the stars, the moon, the sun rise for no reason. What is the reason that sun rises? You may say that sun rises because if sun does not rise, we cannot do the work, we will be sleeping. Does sun think that way? Sun rises for no reason, so too God's play is for no reason. Everything appears to be manifesting, however in reality it remains unmanifest. You think sun is rising? Is it really rising? Sun never rises and never sets. It simply appears because of the movement of the sun and the earth. The moment you realize it is sun is setting in one part and is rising in the other. No, it is because of the movement this illusion appears to be. The sun is setting here. It is good. To watch the sun rising and sunrise and sunset. But deep down you know there is sun never sets, never rises. It simply appears. Then again and again you are filled with wonder and gratitude. He wonders how to explain or describe the existence. I can sacrifice not once instead again and again for lives. Leave everything on him. Catch hold of the one. Every riddle of life will certainly solve. Only problem with you is you consider your destiny in your hand. You want to be your own master. Nanak says, drop that and that alone is the master. Do not take any decision on your own. Just flow with the existential energy. Flow with the river and let that determine. Accept and flow with all that is happening. If happiness comes, if sorrow comes, everything is acceptable because it is coming not from that boyfriend or the girlfriend or the boss. It is coming from the divine. There is no one else. Everything that is happening on the screen is part of the script written by the story writer and the director who is directing the every scene. He directs your dialogue delivery, he gives you a dialogue that is to be said and the dialogue that you have to deliver is written by the story writer. Can we understand this? If we understand this only then we are religious. By going to the temple or the mosque does not mean you are religious. And understanding this is the only prayer. Life will attain a meaning. If you accept all that is happening in life without a murmur, you can become enlightened in that very moment. Nothing is more auspicious than that. Nothing is more auspicious than that.